Yeah, I did. Um, uh, call to order. We're going to start our meeting. Do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You want to do roll call, Kim? Present. Here. Present. Mr. Second Present. Mr. Second Here. Mr. Kramer. Here. Mr. Mosley. Here. Mrs. Murphy. Mrs. Levin. Here. Any recognitions today? Okay. Public comments. Any sign up for? You read that thing? Yeah, we'd like to invite any resident, taxpayer, employee. Sorry about that. I would like to announce that we had an executive session prior to this meeting to discuss personnel and legal matters. So board comments, discussions, I guess superintendent's report now. So we have Mr. Gavlik here across a, um, to present our return to play plan. So at this point, I'm going to share my screen and, uh, and pass it over to Mr. Gavlik. Good evening, everyone. Uh, for your consideration is our Chartres Valley uh, return to play plan for athletics and activities. I will briefly outline some of the highlights of the plan. Chartres Valley will follow all the PA Department of Health, PAA and CDC guidelines as it pertains to COVID-19. Prior to returning to practice, the athletic department will convene a head coaches meeting to review all necessary guidelines. All head coaches will be required to conduct a parent athlete meeting to review all Chartres Valley guidelines and all parents will sign a waiver form granting permission for a screening. Uh, our goal is to have all of the meetings completed and return to play as of June 22nd. Our pre-workout screening will consist of wellness checks. We'll utilize an ath athlete monitoring form. The students must take temperatures at home. If they have a temperature of 100.4 or higher, student athlete will be required to stay home and contact their physician. If any student athlete or parent is concerned and is not comfortable with return to play, they will continue to have online platforms and practice plans available for them at home. Our practice limitations on gatherings will be 30 individuals, including coaches in our indoor facilities and 70 individuals may gather for outdoor workouts. Our workouts will be conducted in pods of students with the same five to 15 student athletes working out together, smaller pods if necessary in the weight room. During this return to play plan, initially we will not utilize our locker rooms. We will have restrooms available at our outdoor stadiums and restrooms available uh, near the weight room facilities. We have outlined uh, the, uh, the sports as low and moderate or high risk sports. Our low and moderate risk sports will begin practices as, as is immediately. 
modified practices for high risk sports, which includes no physical contact, no pads, sleds, shields. Um, the use of sport specific equipment will be permitted, but will be wiped down intermittently during practices um, so that we can continue to follow the safety guidelines. All student athletes will be required to bring their own water bottles to practice. If they do not have a water bottle with them, we will be able to provide some on a limited basis. We will not utilize any water cows, troughs, fountains, um, and things of that nature so that we can continue to practice social distancing. Once we have the opportunity to return to athletic contests, we will have guidelines in place that will again follow PA guidelines uh, and CDC. If we have to follow a 50% maximum occupancy, uh, we will do this and it will include uh, cheerleaders, band, coaches, spectators, et cetera. We will tier our personnel in tier one, two, or three, and determine at that time which individuals will be present at the athletic contest. We do have the ability to stream our contest via the NFHS network. The next slide is the parent guardian spectator expectations. Uh, we would ask that during this time, any student athlete that's coming to Sorters Valley for practices be dropped off at the facilities and then picked up when practices are over. Uh, that will allow us to uh, ensure that we're following the proper guidelines. Our weight room and athletic training rooms will be wiped down and mopped nightly. They will be cleaned at the conclusion of each session within the weight room. Uh, at the end of the presentation, there is a weight room schedule that will be followed. Uh, we will continue to work with our facilities department to provide hand sanitizer and wipes, cleaning wipes, so that the student athletes and the strength conditioning coach can continue to clean uh, as needed. The next slide is in regards to facility cleaning and we'll continue to adequately conduct cleaning schedules um, created and, and implemented for all athletic facilities to mitigate any communicable diseases. The next slide is in regards to hosting our athletic contest. It just gives you a snapshot of what we are going to try to implement if and when we get to uh, having our athletic contest this fall. Our concessions and restrooms, again, same guidelines we'll be following from the health department. We'll have both the home and away visitor, uh, home and away bathrooms and concession stands available for our home football games and our soccer contests in the fall. And the last slide um, in regards to information is that we'll, you know, in regards to overnight or out of state events, uh, at this time, we don't have any scheduled for this fall. And we'll continue to evaluate on a case by case basis, um, depending on the situation with COVID-19. The remaining slides are just the, uh, the form that we are going to utilize to monitor our student athletes, a quick snapshot or a, a Cliff Notes version of what we presented here today the summer strength schedule, and just some signage that we utilize uh, throughout the athletic facilities. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Any questions? Any questions? Uh, it's just good that we're able to communicate this so early to our uh, residents and to the community. Right, this way it's out there to the public and people can pass that on, so thank you. Mike, you did say something that there is gonna be a waiver for parents to sign? There is, including the retirement Good, thank you. Okay, next, um, Mr. Galvick spoke about reopening, and as some of you may be aware, I'm gonna share my screen again with you, that um, the Department of Education has required school districts to prepare um, reopening plans with the community and um, with the district. So I wanna speak a little bit about what all this includes as Mr. Gavlet's presentation was phase one of our reopening. As many of you know, we have students here throughout the summer. So the fact that Mr. Gavlet was able to 
uh, present this plan and get it together as quickly as he did, I, I think is quite impressive because we just found out within the past week and a half um, that we were able to do so. I think the benefit of, of working together as we do is that many of these plans were already in progress. So now we're told we have to do this, but as you are aware, we started reopening planning long before the state said that we have to. Now we have certain provisions that they've given us, um, but as you saw from the article uh, that was put out at the end of May, we began a task force at that time going over various areas. So just um, to share with this, again, we have our mission, vision, and core values here. So our reopening planning will have to make sure that we keep these things in mind that we are adhering to our mission, our vision, and these core values. We have preliminary guidance from the state. So this health and safety plan is, has established guidelines for reopening. There are many areas in this plan that you will hear are musts and that are mays. Many times districts may do things and we may hear that it's a should. So I'm trying very hard to get direct guidance from the state as to those mays and shoulds. But sometimes I ask the board and the community to try not to be confused by the mays and the shoulds. We will do the best that we possibly can for our students and our community with this reopening to make sure that we have a safe and secure environment. And the plan needs to be approved by the school board. It needs to be submitted to um, Pennsylvania Department of Education. We will publish it on our website and we have to schedule trainings for faculty and staff on the in implementation of that. Michaela and I have been working closely to establish almost a reopening page on the website to make sure that all of these plans are public. We also have to establish a pandemic coordinator and pandemic team with specific roles, which we have done in response to this planning. We have to prepare for three phases. The state has given us some guidance on these phases. Red, schools are closed. You have online instruction only. Yellow, schools can have in-person instruction with limitations and restrictions. Green, in-person instruction with precautions and outlines um, and processes and procedures in place. So those are the three areas that we are living in at this time. I had the opportunity to speak with um, various professionals from the Department of Health today, and they said and warned school districts, you're trying to plan for two months in advance when we can only plan for two weeks in advance. So I have to reiterate to everyone, this is, will be a living document, I hope to put forth by the end of June to our community, the foundation of that document so that they can begin to plan accordingly. But we have to be able to pivot and pivot quickly if these things change. So the district is developing plans for that. We will be sending a survey out the end of this week, beginning of next week, and everyone's input on that survey will be greatly appreciated. So as I mentioned, red phase, schools must remain closed, all instruction is provided remote, and school meal programs can continue though. Those are the provisions we've been given from red. Yellow. That's the next phase. You can see that there are some musts and there are some shoulds that are involved here. In yellow, we can, and then you can read through all of these things, but there are various guidelines and there are some shoulds. Posting of signs, isolating quarantine areas, develop, developing process and protocols for this. Green, you have your musts and your maze as well. You have green, your pandemic team, steps to protect children that are at high risk and staff, isolation, signage, procedures in place, and systems for communicating. Naturally, green musts are a little bit um, less restrictive than the yellow and obviously the red. And then maize. And these are all things that our reopening committees are planning for and discussing. Uh, whether um, you have your hygiene practices such as hand washing, face coverings, uh, classroom spaces. We've been measuring classrooms to make sure that we can space out accordingly. The task to reopen, obviously to develop, to develop an instructional plan for each of the phases, to make sure that we have health and safety as identified in each phase. We, 
Obviously, I say here August 11th, but I push that back to June 30th. I want to try to provide that foundation. There may be amendments in July and August 11th at that board meeting, but hopefully by June 30th, we'll have that foundation. Communicate the plans and obviously to district staffs. Yeah, and I'd like to thank the staff and folks that helped, you know, get this place cleaned up and really keep fitness ahead of the curve with this COVID stuff. But thanks for that. Um, Dawn, do you have solicitor's report? And then we have informational agenda, like Pathfinder. Right? Yeah. Uh, and a report for Pathfinder Parkway. Yes. Uh, Was Jeff unmuted? Yeah. I think you were. Um, Shazda? Nothing on Shazda. And then we didn't have a finance committee meeting uh, previous to this, correct, Beth? So there's nothing there. All right. Um, so next we would do the consent agenda. All right. So we've all reviewed the consent agenda. Um, may I have a motion for items 7.2 through 7.21? I have a motion. No, no, that's a mistake. Oh, take uh, any discussion on the any of these items? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No one opposed. Motion's passed. One. Okay, on to action discussions. Um, 8.1 AIU Head Start Program Lease Renewal. The superintendent recommends an ISO move to renew the lease agreement with the AIU Head Start Program uh, at the primary school. May I have a motion for item 8.1? Second. Anyone opposed? Discussion on this item? No discussion on 8 1. All good. Uh, right. 
So, so in favor, uh, we do that. Uh, and I'm opposed. Motion passes. Eight. There is no seven point two two. Yeah. Here we go. So now uh, eight point two pay caps. The superintendent recommends an ISO move to pay caps for May twenty twenty. I have a motion for item eight point two. Second. Second by Mr. Chor. Any discussion on this item? <clears throat> yeah, take a look then. So we still have it. They still have the same set of time. Like for all the money. Um, correct. Um, the tunnel still does have, have a leak there, and we are withholding payment for, for, um, to, from PJ and from Rikon uh, for that. Uh, for that. So, and uh, Jason Day has updated me on that, and I've also requested to sit down and meet with him to go over various punch list items. He sent an update earlier in the week that I'd like to compare with what we have in house and then just kind of go over those things and hopefully have the majority of it wrapped up by the start of school in the fall. I, I think that's pretty reasonable. Did they have any idea if, um, when that's going to be fixed or if it's going to be fixed or not? I was told it would take three days oh. in February. <laughs> it's been a few months. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. In the event that um, they they fix the tunnel, I think we have to consider a third party um, inspection to make sure that somebody else outside of them says that the tunnel's fixed. Yeah, it's real attractive for them to patch and walk away right now. Yeah, we need a and three years from now. There's water. It's too big a deal. That's yeah. right. That's right. And it's kind of infrastructure, so we should take it seriously. Um, this this is all what looks as right on what's left on the punch list, and they're not in the pay act, right? So we're good. Yeah, so they might not put all that back until they don't put all back and redo it. Okay, good conversation around pay apps. That's okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Take your time, huh? Um, action discussion 8.3 approved 2020 21 final budget. The superintendent recommends an ISO move to adopt and approve the general fund budget of the Chartiers Valley School District in the amount of $68,063,541 for the fiscal year beginning the first day of July 2020 with the necessary revenue for the same period of the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2020 provided by the earned income tax resolution, a deed transfer tax resolution, a realty transfer tax resolution, and an occupation privilege tax resolution adopted May 25th, 2004, and a realty transfer tax resolution dated January 9th, 2007, and by the school tax in real estate, which is hereby levied and assessed at a rate of 18.2118 mills, or at the rate of $1.82 of each $100 of assessed valuation of taxable property, and to adopt and approve the Chartiers Valley 
School District Budget Resolution dated June 16, 2020. <clears throat> All taxpayers required to pay tax on real estate imposed by the school district shall be entitled to a 2% discount within two months after the date of tax notice. Shall be charged penalty of 10% if paid more than four months from the date of notice and all delinquent real estate taxes shall be charged 10% interest unless taxpayers elect to pay such taxes in installments. The board secretary is hereby directed to append a copy of the budget to the minutes and to give notice to the Department of Community and Economic Development of the Act 511 taxes as required by law. Budget is attached, resolution is attached. May I have a motion for item 8.3? And may I have a second? Any discussion on this item? To not allow tax increases, are we past that? Like, not necessarily. Yeah. Yeah, for there actually is a bill in the house. Uh, that still is alive. Right. That's what I thought. Uh, that could prohibit increases in taxes. Sure. So that's not going to go anywhere, though. Are you running a shadow budget? That's go no. Do you have you know, an alternate budget in the event? Oh. Yeah, it just exists. You know, it's there. I mean, it look good. I mean, it just exists. You know, it's. Um, we have. I mean, we have ideas of how we would move forward, um, and we would put that together, and the state would have to give us time to submit that. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that would look like in the sense of a board meeting since we don't have one right. prior to then. I would think that guidance would come along with the somewhat chaos that would come along with that. We have a lot of good groups advocating on our behalf at that level, explaining to them this is late for a decision um, and that this would complicate things. A lot of the tax collectors are already loading their software in order to put bills out to that one. So at this point, like Johanna said, I mean, I hope we're past it, um, but it's still out there and it's still floating. So we kind of have to hang on and see what happens, but I would think it would be really hard to pull off at this point. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Any other discussion on this item? Yeah, I would like, um, with so much is going on out there, you know, personally, I just can't support it at this time. There's too many uncertainties and people out of work, the jobs, their, their, their business haven't been restarted. And I don't know, maybe we should even froze everything this year. But right now, I just, I can't go along with the increase, so that's my feeling. All right, thank you for that, Jeffrey. Um, so all in favor? No, yeah. It's easier. So all in favor? Aye. Uh, anyone opposed? No. So let the record reflect, Mr. Toro. No. Um, motion passes. Uh, on 8.4, approve the 2020 2021 the superintendent recommends and I so move to approve the 2020-21 capital reserve budget in the amount of up to $572,560 contingent upon certain 2020-21 capital expenditures that may be bid and approved at later dates. May I have a motion for item 8.4? And a second. Second. Any discussion on this item? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. 8.5 approved the Homestead Farmstead Resolution for 2020 2021. 
the superintendent recommends an ISO move to approve the attached 2020-2021 Homestead and Farmstead Exclusion Resolution Authorizing Act 50 and Act 1 Homestead and Farmstead Exclusion for real estate tax deductions for the school year beginning July 1st, 2020. So then I read this other board message part, correct? No. Um, may I have a motion for item 8.5? Second. Second by Mr. Chora. Any discussion on this item? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Ayes to have it, motion passes. Uh, now we can move on to public comments. Uh, non-agenda items. There. Is there anyone one uh, anyone registered in the Zoom meeting who wishes uh, to address the board in non-agenda items? If so, we ask you please enter your name, address, and municipality in the chat section of this Zoom meeting. Kim, has anyone registered to speak on non-agenda items? Okay. 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 Oh, it's okay. He's on mine. Can you hear me? Ian, you should yeah, be able to talk here. now. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Can you, I, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Um, Ian, can you unmute yourself? Yes, sorry. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Sorry. So I'm here tonight um, just to talk about, you know, some things going on in this country uh, as far as race relations. I'm sure some, if not all, have been paying attention to what's going on. Uh, these issues are being brought uh, to the attention of all leaders at every level. School districts and their boards are not immune. Our board is not immune. It would be incorrect to paint Chartier's Valley as a pinnacle of diversity. We all know student staff, student body and staff is majority white. It's not a problem. But it's also important to know that we probably are more diverse. I don't have the demographics in front of me as, we, as I'm speaking. Our district is probably more diverse uh, than some of our neighboring school districts when you think about it. That's why now, more than ever, it's important to considering putting measures in place within our district to truly make it a place that is no place for hate that so many people have said over the past uh, several years. My questions tonight are straightforward. What is Chartreuse Valley doing besides some joint statement put together? to champion an anti-racist environment for the student body, staff, and community members. We now need actions, not words. Can you truly say in all of your heart, in your heart of hearts that you're doing enough? When I was in school 11 years ago, I witnessed black and brown students discipline differently, talk to differently, coach differently. I have no children in the school system now, I'm not very involved. So I can't say if think, you know, from personal experience, if things have changed. I have talked to some of my neighbors in the community. Some feel that some things have not changed. I know of teachers uh, through uh, that teachers and staff that post things on social media, like I don't see color. You know, these things aren't necessarily bigoted, but would but I question that they may not that they may under, may not understand the plight of black people in our country. And this may allow for their unconscious bias to treat students who don't look like them different. It would not, I don't know if this has been in place uh, with the district, 
that uh, if there's any mandatory diversity training or anti-bias training, if there is, great, maybe more. If there isn't, I think this should be required by all district staff. When it comes to teaching black history, it should be incorporated every level. Black history is American history. It should not be regulated to a month. Yes, teaching about Dr. King, the civil rights movement, slavery, all crucial, stu all crucial for the student body to learn about. But it shouldn't stop there. It should be taking, it shouldn't take a course when our students leave in a college or even just hearing it about it in current events today to learn about redlining, the Tulsa race massacre, the Tuskegee experiments, how black soldiers came home from World War II but were not offered many of the benefits their white brethren received from the New Deal that is touted in, in high school history classes across the country. There are many resources out there on how racism can be taught about and talked about with every age group at every level. There is no denying system, systemic racism, racism is not real. I hope we all can agree that we want a more just society. We can get there if we start at the youth and young adult level. It will take time, many, many moments of uncomfortability, moments of tension and backlash to incorporate an agenda and curriculum. But you, our elected officials, can choose now to be on the right side of history. I'll leave you with this from somebody that is renowned in the Western PA area, PA area, Roberto Clemente. Anytime you have the opportunity to make a difference in this world and you don't, then you're wasting your time on this earth. It is your moment now to make a difference. What will you do? Thank you, Mr. McNeil. Thank you. Anyone else sign up now, Brent? Okay. All right. Um, so we have 10, uh, item 10, adjournment. Well, aren't we going back into executive session? I'll have to say that's right. We will be going back into exec executive session after this meeting. Thank you for that, Darren. Um, so may I have a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Good day, folks. Thanks for joining us.